Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 89. Jack and the Peanuts for the Holidays. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my crazy cat lady co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hey! Went all script there, didn't I? <laughs> you did! I'm <laughs> surprised! So why are you the crazy cat lady? Let's get a shot of the shirt okay, first. Okay, so my shirt is of uh, cats, uh, Doctor Who, the, the various doctors as different cats. Right. And what marked the occasion for wearing that? We have a new family member that joined us uh, as of last Wednesday. And who is that? That would be our little pumpkin. <laughs> our new kitten. Yes, we had. Uh, our, our two slightly older cats are having a difficult time adjusting to yeah they're they're not quite sure for, you know fortunately um pumpkins <clears throat> basically been been staying in our daughter madison's room she's been sequestered <laughs> she's under she's, quarantine she's in kitty jail she's in kitty jail um she has very nice accommodations uh, i will say um just so that we can give everybody time to it's like al capone's cell at Eastern state. At Eastern state. So it, it, you know, the other two, Dorothy and Leota, they definitely know that somebody's here because they've seen her, they've sniffed her, and they've both hissed and growled. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have. So, They've acknowledged her. They have acknowledged her, and in they the realize most hostile of ways, <laughs> right? And they realize, you know, little pumpkin isn't going anywhere. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, so I think next week we will probably have our insights into teens episode. We'll be right. dedicated to pumpkin. We'll introduce her, show some right. pictures and movies, and bring her, you know, into the studio. Perhaps she'll and, see. You'll she'll have a guest appearance right, and we'll, so forth. Set so. up a little spot for, yeah. But I had to go off script there just, well, thank just for you. your benefit. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. But we're not talking about that today. Today no. we're talking about entertainment news. So today in our Disney Detective, maybe there's hope for Jack Sparrow. McDonald's Happy Meals will be a Disney-themed sort of Happy Mealy thingy. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Nice. Uh, a holiday special. It's maybe not so special. <laughs> and we're not talking about the Star Wars one now there. Right, right, right. And then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Daisy Ridley claims that uh, Baby Yoda and... Oh, she chimes. Sorry. I'm... I'm my eyes aren't working today. <laughs> if you actually she, read what I wrote. <laughs> I'm going off script, I said. Damn, don't go off script. She chimes in on Baby Yoda and Ray. Star Wars fans are fuming at Disney, which I actually read that article. was was kind of surprised by that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, you all right there? Yeah, I'm good. All Sorry. Right. And uh, sneak peek at the new Star Wars resort, which looks very cool. Yeah. And then in our entertainment news, we'll talk about Wonder Woman 1984 and the un unorthodox release of it and mm -hmm. what it will mean with for Black Widow's release as well. And we have good news from Charlie Brown. And then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Uh, before we do that, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to us. Uh, you can get video versions of the podcast if you look for insights into things. You can get audio versions of the podcast if you search for insights into entertainment. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon. And now I just got notified that we are available on Pandora as well. Ooh. Moving up in the world. <laughs> yes, we are. 
We would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us some feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can hit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, where you can get links to all of our social media on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready to get into it? Sure. All right, let's do it. Go for Disney Detective. So last week, we obviously brought up the whole issue with Johnny Depp losing his role uh, through the Warner Brothers movies uh, that were the prequels to uh, Har- the Harry Potter series. Um, so now it seems that uh, there is a petition going around to make sure that Johnny Depp doesn't lose anything from Pirates of the Caribbean. So in an article that was posted on cinemablend.com, um, it talks about how, you know, even though he, he lost the Grindenwald part in the Fantastic Beasts movies that, you know, now they want to do a petition so that he doesn't lose um, his Captain Jack role in the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Um, And as of the time the article uh, was posted, they actually had 300,000 signatures. Now, the interesting thing, which we, you know, kind of talked about last week, was that plans for the new version of Pirates of the Caribbean didn't even have Jack Sparrow in the role. And this was even decided kind of before all of the the troubles, you know, with him and his his ex-wife even started. So now they're saying, you know, give give him a chance to um the you know give him a chance to actually be part of it you know kind of show the support um for it so i guess we'll kind of you know have to to wait and see the other thing too that you know um the article kind of talked about is that his uh ex-wife is going to be uh, in uh, upcoming, I believe she's supposed to be in Aquaman 2. And because of everything, people are also saying boycott that, you know, to kind of show your support for um, for Johnny Depp versus, you know, her, because now there's all this stuff coming out that maybe she was really in the wrong and not him. So a whole lot of back and forth, you know, with the two of them. But again, just a petition. Who knows if Disney will actually do anything or change anything because again you know i don't know how far along they are in the script we really haven't heard much about it we obviously know they haven't started filming it so who knows maybe they'll go in and uh you know do something with that well and that's the thing like we had discussed last week disney doesn't exactly have a spotless track record when it comes to their talent right you know you've got a lot of people who are nested in controversy with a lot of the Disney stars, especially the young stars that they start out with and right. what they ultimately mm-hmm. evolve into. Um, the fact that they're calling for people to boycott, you know, movies that his ex-wife are in, I think that's probably a little extreme. Right. I mean, it's been found in the courts that he was guilty of spousal abuse. So let's not lose sight of that. Right. You know, we certainly don't mm-hmm. want to glorify. Mm-hmm any inappropriate behavior that he's right. done, even if you do like the work that he's done as an actor. But did he violate any terms or clauses of, of his employment with Disney? Right. Exactly. You have to kind of look at it from that standpoint. Right. You know, you know there Disney has a code of conduct for, mm-hmm. for its talent. And if it, if you violate that code of conduct, there are consequences. Right. If he wasn't, in violation of that, maybe because he wasn't actively under contract at the time or whatever, then you can't really enforce it at that point mm-hmm. in time. You have to treat him fairly like everyone else. Right. You know, it's it's interesting to see the kind of support that he's getting here that he wasn't getting on the Harry Potter side right. of things. Right. So we'll see how it turns out. And because Disney fans are better than Harry Potter. Are they? I don't know. I don't know. I like that. them both, but obviously I'm more Disney than yeah, Harry yeah. Potter. So. Well, <laughs> let's not judge. 
Uh, tell us about McDonald's and their new line of Happy Meal toys. So if you are a collector of Happy Meal toys and you happen to be a Disney fan, uh, McDonald's has a new line of Disney World themed Happy Meal toys. Uh, the article came from People.com. And to its, um, so the line of Happy Meal toys are to commemorate the anniversary celebration. So it's Mickey and Minnie have, uh, inspired a brand new of Happy Meal toys. Um, and each have, um, feature a different ride, uh, from the, the park. So you have Goofy on Expedition Everest. Um, you have the Runaway Railway. Um, you have, uh, Pluto on Jungle Cruise, Minnie is on the Dinosaur Ride and Pirates of the Caribbean, Mickey is on Splash Mountain and the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, Donald is on the Mad Tea Party, and Mickey and Minnie are together in a railroad card. And if you get all of them, they actually link up in a cute little train. Um... There was no Haunted Mansion one, so that's why I wasn't going all crazy. <laughs> I wanted to get them. Um, so customers can collect all the toys at participating McDonald's locations through December 14th, obviously while supplies last. And also, if you purchase a Happy Meal, customers can also enter for a chance to win a vacation for four to Walt Disney World. Which has to be taken two at a time because of limitations <laughs> right. on capacity. Right. And obviously, you know, you know, I have various different Happy Meal toys in, in my collection of Disney because Disney usually comes out with something every couple of years, um, you know, either right. anniversary park related or, or something. So I'm curious, so which one is on the one to commemorate the great movie ride? Oh yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> well, that's the, the one, the last one. That's their their. Uh, that's the one that took over the great movie, right? right. That's yeah. the one that took over the great yeah. movie. Yeah, I'm still bitter yeah. About that. Oh, that's actually cute. I didn't realize that the little Epcot one with Daisy and Soren. Oh yeah, that's yeah. kind of cute. That see cute. now, see now, I might have to. Damn. See. And usually what I end up doing is I just buy them on eBay because this way I don't have to get all just the different happy eat, eat the 30% yeah. markup and get them on eBay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So for those of you that, you know, are toy collectors or, eh, yeah, who knows when the next toy show will be. But, That's true. yeah, you can probably find them all on, on eBay right now if you're not, you know, interested in actually having the Happy Meal toy. Well, I'm done, I'm done holiday shopping for you, so I'm not getting these for you. Okay. That's fine. So you're okay to go out and get these if you oh, want. Oh, okay. Good. Thanks. Yeah, the green light. <laughs> I'm so glad to know that. So, wonderful world of Disney, magic holiday celebration. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so coming from the website WDWNT.com, um, the wonderful world of Disney magical holiday uh, celebration uh, is actually doing its fifth anniversary edition. Now, obviously, because of COVID and everything that's going on, this will actually feature a nostalgia uh will feature nostalgic performances of holidays past so that's why when i kind of teased about it not being such a you know special holiday special because there's nothing new it's all repeat performances you know unfortunately because of everything um they are going to have um a host um who will be uh trevor jackson who uh is from the show uh grown up ish <clears throat> and also uh Derek and Juliana Hoff uh will co-host uh as well um so obviously they're really the only live new i should say part of this everything else are performances from um you know all the various years uh that they've been doing the special on Thanksgiving night um but the the one thing that is kind of cool is that viewers will actually get a sneak peek of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, which will is the new ride that's going to be opening up in Epcot. Now, that was slated to open up this year, but because of, obviously, all the pushback, it's uh, supposed to be opening in 2021. Uh, there'll also be a sneak peek of the Disney and Pixar's new movie, Soul, which that 
premieres on Disney Plus uh, next month. So the special will air on Thanksgiving Day, um, which will be at um, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Well, that sounds kind of cool. I mm-hmm. mean, instead of thinking of it as old performances, thinking think of it as like a greatest hits. There you go. Disney's greatest hits with some sprinkles of teasers for new and upcoming things. There you go. I mean, they're going back pretty far. You got 2016 performances here. Well, yeah, because they've been doing the Thanksgiving show for five years now. So they're, you know. You got people on here I've never even heard of before. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. <laughs> Hey, but Pentatonix is going to be in there. That was is a, there. That was, that, that was actually like that a very one. good performance. So Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Jason Derulo, One Republic. Don't know them. If you don't know. So, don't know. I know Boys to Men. Boys to right, Men. Right, Boys to Men. <clears throat> Andrea Bocelli. Right. I'll you, say the you name because I know you're right, in trouble right. pronouncing it. Right. Shaggy. Megan from, Trainer. From Scooby Doo. Different sa- Shaggy. Different Shaggy. Yeah, look, it's a, a Dimza Dimzel. <laughs> Tina Menzel, <laughs> Christian Bell. She's oh, going to be here as well. Oh, boy. So, Good times. Should be fun. We'll, yeah. we, you know we're going to watch it no matter what. Oh, of course, because we'll be home. It's not like, you know, we're, exactly. we're going we're anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Right. PJ's on Thanksgiving Day. Woo! Although I'm sure we'll be Zooming with everyone. I hope so. That'll be nice. Yeah. But that was all we had for our Disney detective. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a minute with our tales from the edge of the galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly, and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars Trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Pew, pew. Don't do pew, pew. There's no pew, pew. <laughs> do it's just it's my thing um so uh our our next story uh talking about daisy ridley uh she actually is defending baby yoda um eating those eggs and says that star wars episode nine was ray's perfect ending so the article actually came from games uh gamesradar.com and if you hadn't been watching the mandalorian i don't know what you're waiting for but anyway <laughs> what rock are you under? what rock are you living under pay you know your monthly subscription and just start watching it but there was a lot of controversy during the episode where baby yoda was eating all the unfertilized eggs you know, a lot of people actually, you know, and, and I didn't include those stories last week, but there were people that were like, that's it. Baby Yoda is the most vile and evil Disney character because he's eating all these eggs. He's using the force to get it. And uh, she had this um, interview where um, not only was she talking about her character, but she basically said, look, Mando's got to eat. Baby Yoda's got to eat as well. And that's just that. Um, and she's like, you know, Baby Yoda, you know, you got to do your thing. <laughs> Obviously, it was kind of cruel, you know, but at least he wasn't eating the fertilized ones. So I guess there, there's that. Um, so she, you know, she is obviously a fan of the Mandalorian and obviously didn't see any issue with what Baby Yoda uh, was doing. But then in the other part of the article, she was talking about, 
you know, her whole, um, you know, raise um, sort of ending, I guess, uh, with episode nine. And she says, I think for me, the beauty of episode nine is that it ends with such hope and such potential. I just feel like that was Ray's perfect ending. The big battle was in seven, eight and nine. And she said, and I think really Ray's probably running around the forest somewhere, just having a great time. Uh, she said, she went on to say, I feel totally, <clears throat> excuse me, totally satisfied with how that story finished and i just don't know what else she could uh she could do that i haven't uh had to do she said also there were so many amazing characters in star wars that it's sort of an amazing thing she said i was watching the new episode of mandalorian and just all the different places it can go beyond even where it is now i'm so excited and she talked about she doesn't feel her character that ray needs to continue on because again there's so many other characters in the star wars universe that she feels it's their time to kind of come forward. So kind of, kind of cool. Well, it's good that she feels that way because her character is probably not going to go anywhere. Right. At this point in time. Right. It, was it the best way for her character to end? Probably given how terrible the story was well, around her. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think you could have gone a different direction once they made her Palpatine spoilers. Palpatine's daughter. Right. A granddaughter. Right. Um, <clears throat> you couldn't really go a different direction there. You've killed off all the old characters except for Chewie. Right. Which is ironic because in, in the ex expanded universe, he was the first of the classic characters to die, and he's the only one that survived. Hmm. You know? Plot twist. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think you could have done more with the character given how young she was. Mm hmm I, I think you could have... Like the whole point of this last trilogy was to bring the bring an end to the Skywalker saga. Right. And then have a springboard for all these other things that could have happened outside of the Skywalker legacy. Right, right. And bringing someone in who has that force power, who has the connection to the Skywalker legacy, but isn't a Skywalker. Right. Probably would have been the best way to, to kick off the next set of movies. I could see that. But that's probably not going to happen now. And I think Disney, you know, after that solo movie, kind of learned their lesson that they can't crank these things out like an assembly line. Mm -hmm. They're not Marvel. They don't have that rich of a story. Well, it, it'd be different if they were actually borrowing from the expanded universe. But right, instead, because they then threw they the whole thing right, out. Right, they said, <laughs> no, nah, we're done with this. You know, where Marvel, they've got 60 years, 70 years. 80 of, years. 80 years of stories that they're pulling from. Right. That, you know, you're you're able to bring that stuff in in different elements. You'll have to bring it in exactly the way it was. Right. And Star Wars is starting to learn that now, too. But, you know, you look at the current season of The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. it, and it's kind of drifting back into that realm of unlikelihood. Right. Because, you know, The Mandalorian was this fringe character on the edge of the galaxy to highlight the fact that there was more to the story of Star Wars than just the Skywalkers. Right, right. And now this season, you've got elements from the Clone Wars creeping in. You've got Boba Fett creeping in. You've got Ahsoka Tano creeping. So mm -hmm. now you're taking this huge expanded universe that you're trying to portray and you're contracting it again. And you have these characters like Bo-Katan and Boba Fett and all these other characters that, you know, next week we're expected to, to see mm -hmm. yep. Ahsoka Tano. Right. And they overshadow the Mando. Mm. So that's kind of what I'm scared about with this season of The Mandalorian is that it's just, it's going to become, you know, the, the typical production line Star Wars of, okay, here's all these characters that we know and everybody somehow knows each other and we all go to Tatooine for some reason. I don't know why, you know, this planet that was built as a backwater that nobody goes to, everything Everybody happens seems on to it. be, <laughs> well, maybe that's why everybody goes there because they know. Nobody else does. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's the thing. Like, it's, it's just so implausible. That right. Because the there's like, all these other planets and all these other Like, for instance, things. Disney. Okay. So we go to Disney pretty frequently. 
and there are times that we know that you've got friends from work or, or something else that are down there. Right, right. And you don't accidentally bump into them because there's millions of people that are there. If right. you want to see them, you need to make arrangements. Right, right. Unlike Star Wars, where everybody seems to bump into everyone on Tatooine. It's like, it, it, <laughs> it's a big universe, people. Let's let's ex- Let's, let's all explore. go someplace else. Let's explore. So, so why are Disney fans fuming now? So, uh, so the article that came out, it's actually been in various different, uh, news outlets. This article happened to come from looper.com. And, um, what it seems is that Disney is refusing to pay royalties to a science fiction legend. Um, so Alan Dean Foster is the author of a multitude of original novels and film novelizations, as well as an experienced franchise hand. He wrote Star Wars from the Adventures of Luke Skywalker, which was the novelization of George Lucas's 1977 film A New Hope, which was credited to Lucas as the author, as well as the 1978 uh, sequel novel Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Most recently, the Star Wars universe, uh, in the Star Wars universe, Foster penned the novelization of the 2015 Force Awakens. He's also tackled no- novelizations uh, from Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Aliens Covenant, Transformers, uh, Star Trek, Star Trek Into the Darkness, and Uh, Terminator Salvation. So the problem is that now Disney owns the rights to Foster's Star Wars novelizations um, from the adventures of Luke Skywalker and Splinter of the Mind, as well as his alien stuff, because uh, Lucas, because that was all 20th Century Fox stuff, which now Disney owns all of that. So it seems um, that they have actually stopped paying the royalties on all of these books. Um, so there was, uh, so it was uh, November 18th. Um, he actually uh, went with the science fiction and fantasy writers of American Union um, to kind of fight this. And basically the statement that came out was that, you know, Disney basically said, well, we bought the rights, but we don't have to pay royalties on anything because that was basically, you know, those deals were made before we even owned it is really what Disney is coming out and saying, where, you know, the union is basically coming back and saying, when you buy another company, you acquire all of its liabilities as well as its assets. So if you're reaping the benefits of the assets, you need to be paying out. Um, so again, Disney basically said in theirs that they're not obligated to keep up with any contracts that were made prior to them purchasing uh, making the, the the acquisitions of this. So obviously, Twitter was all a buzz when the news came out about this. Um, you know, basically everybody was saying Disney needs to pay, and the hashtag was hashtag Disney must pay. The other thing too is um, he's sick. He, he has cancer. His wife is very ill. He just needs the money to help pay you know, his medical bills. He's not looking to make, you know, millions off of it. He's basically just trying to survive. So hopefully, you know, Disney will come around and realize, you know, the error of their way. But this was, you know, kind of a heartbreaking story for, you know, this author. And he's probably not the only one that it's happening to, but who's, you know, been doing this for, you know, 40 years, 40 plus years, you know, give him his his due. Yeah, this is a typical Disney move here where Disney is leveraging its own muscle and its size by basically interpreting the law as it wants to, Mm -hmm. which is advantageous to itself. Mm -hmm. This is very similar to when we had done, I, you know, we had had uh, the insightful pick of the movie surrounding. Uh, the Lion King song. Mm-hmm, right. And they did the sort of the same thing there. They mm-hmm. basically acquired the rights indirectly, not from the artist itself, but right. indirectly and decided that, they, you know, they didn't have to pay royalties on mm-hmm. it. 
and they lost in court. You know, well, they didn't lose in court. They settled out of court. Mm-hmm. And this sort of thing's probably going to have the have have the same effect. Mm-hmm. They're gonna they're gonna settle out of court because there's no copyright court in the world who's going to side with Disney on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What Disney is hoping to do is that they're they're hoping to fight long enough for him to die from cancer. Yeah, which is which is criminal in mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. Yeah. I I tend to bash Disney a lot. Mm-hmm. These are the things that and I bash the, Disney absolutely. on. And I You know, Disney mm-hmm. the, the, his his the, Alan Dean Foster's lawyer made a a case here and basically said either A, you need to pay the back royalties and pay for royalties if you continue to publish. B, you need to stop publishing the works that you're using mm-hmm. and pay the back royalties. Or C, you need to stop publishing until you have a new agreement in place right. and pay the back royalties. Either way, you have to pay the back right. royalties. You mm-hmm. don't have a choice. Absolutely. Uh, and Disney's Disney's really trying some underhanded stuff on this one here, mm-hmm. and they're going to take their lumps for it. Yep. You know, especially given the climate in which they're doing this in, mm-hmm. the the condition he and his wife are in at this point in time, and the history that he has with the Star Wars fans. Do you really think the Star Wars fans are going to let Disney get away with this? Absolutely. They're not. They're going to tear Disney apart for this, mm-hmm. and justifiably so. Yep. So we'll see. Hopefully they'll settle this out of court quickly and and favorably and uh and we won't have to bash Disney too much on this cuz it's not like I don't need more ammunition to bash them <laughs> Exactly. On. I mean this is this is just <laughs> This is just bonus here. Too too easy. All too easy. All too easy. Nice. <laughs> Every now and then I get a good one. <laughs> so, what's our next exciting story? So, let, let's let change to something, you know, a little bit more upbeat. So, uh, news came out where Walt Disney World had actually shared the first images of the rooms at its upcoming Star Wars theme hotel. So, this article actually came from uh, The Mirror, uh, which is actually based in the UK, And it shows some of the concept art and some of the actual pictures, again, that Disney has now shared of the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, which will be offering two night immersive experiences for the guests. So the ship is built at the the hotel is actually built as if you are on a ship. And the whole experience about it is that once you check in, you're kind of sent on, um, you know, on a smaller ship to bring you to your room and everything is is all, you know, immersive in it. Um, What was kind of cool was that the images that they were showing were almost exact to the artist renderings that had originally come out. So if you see here... um, This view is from the bunk beds that they have. So they have two bunk beds, um, looks like a queen size bed. And then, you know, your port, your uh, portal portal to, you know, to be able to see. And then I'm guessing, you know, that one spot is actually a television that'll, you know, and then it looks like you have some storage. Um, One of the other views they show from the other side yeah, so here you can see the the two bunk beds for your kids, a little, you know, area, you know, a little nightstand. And then obviously you have your hallway leading to uh, the bathroom. Looks like your closet with your um, safe, as well as a little refrigerator, a little um, vanity area, maybe. Uh, so really, it, it looks like you're on you're on a ship. Um, you know, what's going to be cool is, again, you're going to, uh, you know, check in and then they're going to, you know, transport you to the the main ship. Um, and then, again, there's going to be different activities that are going on within the resort or, quote unquote, on the ship for you to do. And then there'll be um, a special way that they'll actually take you to to galaxy's edge now they haven't really talked about pricing um or anything yet they haven't started doing bookings for this either because they they haven't said okay well if you book at the resort is a park ticket included or do you need to additionally 
have uh, a park ticket to go to Galaxy's Edge or is it, you know, something kind of linked in? Because, again, we really haven't heard too much, but kind of cool looking, you know, something to to look forward to, um, you know, in the coming years, obviously. Um, Again, right now, nothing uh, is available, um, you know, to book, but it is set to open in 2021. Book it as soon as you can. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care if it comes with a ticket. Book it. We're going. Wait a second. This guy, oh, we're not going to Galaxy's Edge for a couple of years. And what did we end up doing? We went how many months after it opened? A few. A few. We waited a few months. It was a couple of years in dog years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, so I'm sure if you um you know, keep looking on on the website as soon as something becomes available, I'm sure it'll pop up. So, so. when we had talked about this before when they they had originally announced this, they mm-hmm. had announced that they were going to have limited stays there. So it's just for a couple of days, right? Right. Yeah, you can only do um, you know, in this article it just really talked about a two night immersive experience so i don't think you can get so it's one of these if we go down for a week we have to make multiple two nights there and then however not that we don't resort hop from place to place because of the uh (laughs) what's available right well no because well and the reason why we did that the last time was when we made our uh vacation plans we did them within a short period of time well we also did it over christmas too right so we (laughs) so one we picked the week of christmas we had how many resorts that time four did we do four because we did vero we did hilton we did well because we did hilton head on the way home right we went to vero beach because we weren't we didn't want to stay on property and i think we we did two, two we did two different resorts, right? Because, because we did uh, Grand, Fl- not Grand Floridian, uh, the big one, the where we had the big room. Oh, we did that one that time. Yeah, that oh, was the first one we that was uh, Old Key West. Old Key West, right? Because we did and then Old we went Key West, to, uh, Saratoga Springs, right? Because when we changed our dates around, we needed an extra. We realized we were getting down there a right. day early, so and we blew like. A gazillion, not a gazillion, but it seemed like just for one night, we stayed yeah. in this three bedroom. We spent a five night stay in one, <laughs> one suite. We were only Which there was, one day. It was cool. Though. It was cool. It, it was, was a cool it experience. Was, it was definitely, you know, a, an interesting experience and one for when things are a little bit more normal, we realize we could bring, you a know, lot of friends a us. lot of friends with sleep, us. What, 10 people, I think there. It was like 10 or nine or something because yeah. you had the, you had the, the master had, bedroom. And then you had the extra the bedroom other with two, two bed, doubles. Right. You had, and then the couch in the main. Yeah. Cause you had two other bedrooms with that could sleep four. Well, no, you had one no, bedroom. No, one bedroom that could sleep. You had sleep. the master bedroom. Then right, you had that the could guest sleep four. That then, could sleep four. Right, right. And then you had the, the couch. couch that could sleep. Right, Somebody two, could go on the deck because the deck was. And the, the chair was, itself, the one chair was a single, a right. double bed that folded yeah. out. So, yeah, yeah, with a full kitchen and, yeah. and everything. So, so, so yeah. four resorts and one trip. Yeah, that was that, that was, was fun. It was, that was fun. Yeah, it was interesting. So, but we'll do the same thing here. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll and I'm sure everybody here. else will be, you know, doing the same thing. Cause again, most people, you know, yeah. go down for more than just two days. So, yeah. so should be fun. Mm-hmm. Keep our eye out. As soon as it's available, we'll book <laughs> it and put... then we'll let everyone else know. Right. <laughs> we got to get ours in first. <laughs> nice. It's for the sake of the show. So we can get on there. Right. And do a exactly. Review. Exactly. It's all for you guys. Exactly. Our, our watchers. So that was all we had for our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. We'll be back in a minute with our entertainment news. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, 
and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for entertainment news. So, um, what does Wonder Woman 1984 mean for Black Widow and other various movies? Uh, so this article came from comicbook.com and it was announced, uh, earlier this week that Wonder Woman 1984 was actually going to be released not only in the theaters, but also on HBO Max, which is HBO's, uh, streaming uh, add-on service. Um, it's going to be coming out on Christmas Day. And a uh, different article, actually, that I read uh, this morning talked about that it was actually only going to be on HBO Max for a month. So it's just going to be from December 25th to January 25th, and then just regular uh, theatrical release. But again, with this coming out, what does it mean for Black Widow? Because that was actually the next Marvel movie that was supposed to be released. And now we have no dates as of right now when it's going to be coming out. So it kind of, you know... Uh, you know, Disney was definitely one who didn't want to bring anything to the streaming uh, side of things. And then, obviously, with the way things kind of went in the beginning of the year, Mulan kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And then Mulan finally got released, excuse me, on Disney Plus, but they did the whole tier um uh, thing where you had to pay the extra, you know, $30 to be able to watch it right then and there. We were going to do it and then we just never got around to it. So now in what a couple of weeks, we'll be able to watch Mulan as part of regular Disney Plus. But the interesting thing is that for uh, Wonder Woman 1984, there is no special tier. It's just part of your regular membership. And um, in looking at it, it's only fourteen ninety nine a month. So I could definitely see a lot of people paying more, you know, paying more people to pay to be able to see Wonder Woman than maybe they did to see uh, Mulan. Because you figure it's, you know, 15 bucks. If we were going to go to the movies... It, we'd be paying $45, you know, for, for all of us to see it. And the fact that it's only going to be available for the one month. And then after that, you know, it, it, it goes away. But again, what does this mean, you know, for other, uh, you know, movies, you know, that Disney has planned, you know, obviously originally when everything, um, you know, was going on, you know, Bob Iger came out and, and said that, you know, he didn't see, you know, all of their big movies really going, you know, to streaming or, or to be on, you know, any of those platforms, they really needed to be in the theaters. And then obviously, as time went on, and things kind of kept getting, you know, pushed back and pushed back, they realized they needed to do something with it. And I think it was a smart move for, for them to do that. So now it kind of makes you wonder, is it something where maybe, you know, probably we probably won't see anything before the end of the year because they do have some other things, uh, you know, coming out on Disney Plus. We have the the Disney Pixar uh, movie Soul that'll be next month. Um, and then we're supposed to be getting uh, some of the WandaVision stuff coming out. Um, so maybe this is something they're planning for the beginning of next year if things don't start looking any better with, you know, COVID cases and the, and the numbers, you know, within the U S maybe Disney will finally decide, you know what, let's just put it on Disney plus to, to get it out there. So. Well, what amazes me is the fact that <clears throat> they've been in this quarantine mode now for how many months now, 10 months now almost. And, and they still haven't come up with 
a viable, workable way of doing this. Everyone's right. sort of testing the waters 10 mm-hmm. months into this. Yeah. And you've got movies and TV shows to a lesser extent that are in production now. Mm-hmm. And they still don't have a plan on how they're going to roll these out. Like I, I could almost see them having a pay-per-view option. Right. Because you have to make your money back on these. Yeah. You're not making your money back on a monthly right. subscription. Right. On a movie that's got a $100 million budget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're just not. Right. So you have to have some kind of direct income from that movie via ticket sales mm-hmm. or pay-per-view sales or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they haven't come up with anything yet kind of makes me, you, you look at things like Quibi, for instance. Mm-hmm, right. And it was a very traditional Hollywood-centric idea that they wanted to bring to something that was revolutionary with the internet. Mm-hmm. And it failed miserably. Right. And it makes me think that these these Hollywood executives are so far over their heads at this, in over their heads at this point in time, that they have no idea how that they're going to make money in this, this new environment that Mm -hmm. we're in. Because there's still no talk of the theaters reopening anytime soon. Right. And especially with the numbers rising again, any of the theaters that have opened are probably going to be the first thing to close. So, you know, where we were willing to pay the $30 to watch Mulan and then within the following week, they were like, oh, but if you wait until December, you don't have to pay at all. So then we were like, all right, well, we'll wait. But if they had said the only way to watch right. it was like to pay the not, $30. If you don't pay your $30, this isn't coming to Disney Plus right. for a year. A lot more people would have been right. Then we would it. Right. Then we would have said, all right, here's my $30 because it's, again, yeah, cheaper so for all of us. It's, it's almost like Disney came up with a model. Right. And then decided to shoot themselves in the foot with it. Yeah. And and honestly, if you weren't willing to pay the $30, how were you going to go see it in the theater? Because I don't know any... Now, granted, if you're a single person, yes, $30 would have been right. steep for one person well, to, you know... and I'd be more inclined to spend $30 to see it in the theater than to see it at home on my oh. you know, living room couch. Well... Yeah, because of the the full surround sound right. and the whole experience. It's a very different experience. experience that you're getting. Oh, absolutely! But we also have a really <laughs> big TV and a pretty decent well, surround yeah. sound but not too. Not everybody does, right? And not everybody does. And there are plenty of people that when they watch it, they're just watching it on their their laptop or their right. phone, even. So, yeah, I could see why do I want to spend thirty dollars when well, I and, and thirty dollars might not be the magic point, right? Fifteen. And the other thing, remember. If you paid that thirty dollars, mm-hmm. you got to keep it. Right, you can watch it over and over again. <laughs> right, it wasn't. Well, you your didn't typical, get to keep it. It was part of it was your part of your library. Right, as right. Part of your as long as you right. So maybe fifteen dollars, and you get it for a forty-eight hour period, is a better model. Right, because and and you know, back in the day when you could do the on-demand stuff through your cable company, when they would offer. You still can do that, actually. Yeah, it's been... <laughs> nobody does. But nobody does, can. but you could still do it. You know, I'm surprised they didn't capitalize more on that. Yeah. Do, you know, 15... And I see... I could see $15 is that perfect. Yeah. You know, you get it for, you know, four days, say. You know, sure. n- not a week, not two days. You get it, you know. So I definitely think... You know, to be able to watch Wonder Woman 1984, we're going to spring right. for the 15 we'll, bucks. We'll get HBO Max for that month. We'll watch all the stuff that we want to watch mm-hmm. for that month and then we'll stop. Right. Right. Kind of like what we did with, you know, Picard. We're like, all right. You well, know. We got the free trial for that. Right. We did get the free trial, <laughs> but then you didn't cancel it I in time. So we time. did end we up. Did, pay- I did pay. I, so we I paid. Was okay but it that. wasn't it wasn't horrible. It was one month and it yeah, was, you was know, okay eight bucks that. or whatever. So but yeah. But it just it shocks me yeah. that, that these movie executives are continuing to produce content but have no plan for how they're gonna make a profit off of it when they try right. to deliver it. Or you do a, a, a tier of okay, if you're only gonna watch it, you know, so for ten dollars you get it for twenty four hours. For thirty dollars you get it for a week. Right. You know, so if you wanted to, you know Yeah, I guess you could do that. But like 
you know, if, yeah, I, if I spend four, if $15 and I get it for four days, if I need to watch it again, I'll spend those $15 and get another four days for it. Right. But I'm just saying if you kind of tear it down versus, you know, for like the, the person who, you know, oh, well, I'm only one person. If I go to the theater, I'm going to watch it for less than, you know, $30. Yeah, but at that point in time, how many times does a single person need to watch the same movie? How many times did certain people go to see Star Wars? And I have no idea know. what you're talking about. Exactly. No idea. <laughs> so we'll see. You know, obviously, again, like you said, you think by now they'd have a plan in, in place as to how they're going to deal with all these movies right. that, you know, they're starting to kind of backlog, really. Right. So, so yeah, we'll see how it works yeah, out. We'll, we'll see. see how it works out. So Apple tried to pull a Lucy on us <laughs> and, and pull a football out. Right. Where do we stand now with that? Yeah, so obviously, uh, I don't think we actually, we talked about it, but when um, Halloween came around, you know, some of those staple television shows that always come out, you know, certain times a year, uh, The Great Pumpkin wasn't on regular TV. Uh, Apple Plus got the rights to it, and the only way you could see it was if you actually had Apple Plus, which... How many people? <laughs> Raise your hand if you have Apple Plus. And if you do have it, you probably don't know because you got it for free when you bought something. Right. So, you know, there's not that many people out there that, um, you know, that that subscribe to it. But I'm sure there are some. It's obviously not up there in, in the top, you know, the top list of, of streaming services. But now it seems that uh, Charlie Brown is coming back to broadcast television. So PBS, PBS Kids, and Apple announced Wednesday that Snoopy and the gang will be coming to television for the holidays after all. Uh, through Apple TV, uh, though Apple TV has the rights to the Peanuts contact, content, a new deal with PBS uh, will enable the broadcaster to air a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving and a Charlie Brown Christmas this year. Uh, the beloved specials will actually air ad free on November 22nd and December 13th, respectively. And again, this comes after, you know, there was a whole lot of controversy with, you know, the great pumpkin not being anywhere to be found unless you had Apple TV. So again, nice to see, um, you know, that, that it's going to be available. So a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving will be available starting November 18th and to watch free um, from November 25th to the 27th. And then a Charlie Brown Christmas will be available on December 4th on Apple Plus, and then will be able to be streamed for free December 11th, 12th, and 13th. So. so this is this is clear evidence that pressure on a major corporation actually can have some effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a lot of people were very upset that you would take something that has been on public television for forty years now, forty plus years, I think, even more than that. And you're gonna get the, and it's funny because the same same kind of concerns came up when HBO acquired the rights to Sesame Street as well. Right? Yeah. And they wound up coming to terms where all the new stuff came out on HBO and then a couple of months later it would come out on PBS. Right, on regular PBS. Uh, and and that deal worked because it saved mm -hmm. Sesame Street because yeah. Sesame Street's funding had been cut. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the deal was with the the Peanuts franchise being having their rights sold out to yeah. Apple for a period of time or not, but uh you know, it's good to see that a compromise was reached. Mm -hmm. So we can all have our, not that I was never a big fan of Charlie Brown and the Peanuts myself. Right. But, uh, you know, I remember watching it as a kid. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It, it would be unfortunate if today's children couldn't watch it because mm -hmm. there's a lot of lessons we learned from it. Yep. So that was all we had for our entertainment news. Mm -hmm. Figure we'd end on a high note there and uh, we'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick is a show that is currently airing on Disney Plus, but actually 
started out elsewhere. Uh, it is called Brain Games, and it is on, like I said, Disney+. Plus. It is under the National Ge- uh, Geographic uh, header um, with Disney+. Plus. Uh, so Brain Games is an American popular science television series that explores cognitive science by focusing on illusions, psychological experiments, and counterintuitive theory uh, thinking. The series actually debuted on National Geographic in 2011 just as a, a special, and then it returned as an original series in 2013, and uh, set a record of the highest premiering rating for any National Geographic original series. Um, and then they went on to do a seventh season or continue doing uh, seasons up until 2016. Well, then they kind of revamped the show and uh, did a few more seasons. So actually in December of 2019, it was announced that a new format of the show uh, would be done and it would actually be hosted by Keegan, Mike and Michael K. And that actually started um, premiering in January of this year. Um, Maddie and I kind of happened upon it. I think I had watched a fir- a couple of the episodes just on myself. So the first couple of seasons, the episodes were um an hour long and then with the other seasons they became a half hour long so when maddie and i were doing our our tv night our movie nights um we kind of ran out of disney movies to watch so i was like all right let's see if she you know she's into this um and she actually you know really is because again they do all these little mind tricks and and things and teasers um but what's neat is after they do all of these different things they explain how it worked how they got you to to do these brain teasers on you what what the reasoning was behind it so you know she's at that age where it makes sense to her you know i think for younger kids it you know they might not get it but i think you know the the older kids you know have an appreciation for it um and we're only on you know season three and i think each, you know, season has like 20 episodes. So we're, you know, we haven't even gotten to the newer format stuff. We're still on the the older stuff. But, you know, really kind of cool and makes you think, hmm, okay. All right. Cool pick. Thank you. So my pick this week is a documentary, but kind of a non-traditional documentary. Uh, I happened to stumble upon this one trying to find something to watch on (laughs) Amazon Prime. And this goes back a ways. This was actually uh, uh, produced in uh, 2010. And it's called With Great Power, The Stan Lee Story. An epic's original production on the life and times of legendary comic book creator Stan Lee. Featuring Nick Cage, Kirsten Dunst, and others. This feature-length documentary looks at some of the more than 200 comic book characters Stan Lee is the co-creator of, including Spider-Man, Hulk, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, and more. Sean Astin, Tobey Maguire, Roger Corman, Frank Miller, and others discuss the life and extraordinary career of Marvel Comics legend Stan Lee and the army of characters that originate from his mind that today can be found in comic books, movie screens, and in retail stores around the world. What I thought was was really interesting was this wasn't just a bunch of people talking about Stan Lee and how great he was. Mm-hmm. There were extensive interviews with Stan Lee here that were done, obviously, before he uh, passed away a few years ago. But they were done in very intimate ways. Like, he... You go into Stan Lee's house in California. Mm-hmm. He takes you into a study where he does all this creating. You know, you see the computer that he writes everything on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the one thing I mentioned to you that was kind of funny is they show him typing away. And, you know, 70 years into his career, he's still typing with two fingers. He never <laughs> learned how to type. Even as prolific a writer as he was, he never learned how to, how to touch type. But you you meet his wife and okay. you, you you learn how he met his wife and some of the similarities between how he met his wife and 
you know, Captain America and Peggy Carter from the first Avenger. You see some of the parallels there. And it's a very interesting side of Stan Lee that I don't think I've ever seen in any other documentary. And it was very, very well done, very touching. Uh, there's a moment in there where uh, uh, Stan Lee's wife is reading a Valentine's Day card. Okay. And he wrote the Valentine's Day card himself. And it was the typical quirky, creative, but touching way that, that Stan has of writing. And at one point in time, she's reading through it and she, she breaks down Aww. in the middle of reading through it. And it, it's, it's, it's touching to see that they have, they, they're married for, for so many years. They were married for over 60 years. And the fact that they still love each other, they drive each other crazy and they admit <laughs> it, you know, but they, they feed off of each other's energy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was just, it was a different kind of document. It was very similar to the the Adam West documentary. Okay. But it was done in a much more uh, intimate way to really get to know Stan. So I really recommend it. It is 10 years old at this point in time, but it still holds itself pretty pretty well. Uh, so with great power, the Stanley story on Amazon Prime. And we'll be right back. So I think that was all we had this week. Did you have any afterthoughts you wanted to talk about? No, I think okay. we're good. Uh, I do want to invite folks to uh, check out our long form articles that are getting stale now because I haven't been publishing. <laughs> I was going to say, when was the last time you they, did any uh, of those? They're available on Medium at medium.com. Maybe next year. Insights into things. Or during the holidays when, you know. Well, you know, when, when the history podcast starts up, I'll have plenty of material that I can publish on that because all that stuff is already written. Right, right. So hopefully spoiler. Hopefully after the <laughs> new year we'll have the new podcast up. There and you running. go. All the research is done on it. The scripts are written. They just need to be proofread and then we'll start production on it and and we'll have something good for folks. Okay. In the meantime, you can listen to uh, our versions of our podcast uh, as Insights in Entertainment or catch the video versions as Insights into Things on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, and now Pandora. You can reach out to us, give us your feedback, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime member, that means you get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription, which we would, would appreciate you throwing our way. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are insights into things. Uh, the audio versions of all of our podcasts are on podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can get high-res video versions of the podcast, all of our podcasts, on youtube.com slash insights into things. And if you can't remember where any of these various things are, you can go to our main website, which is www.insightsintothings.com, and you can find it all there. Don't look at me when you criticize people's memories. You give me I a wasn't. Complex. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's all for this week. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Yes, uh, we will be doing a podcast next week over the holiday. But we uh, are. Yeah, because it's not like we're going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're so. not going shopping. We're not. Uh, we'll we'll be here. Exactly. We'll, maybe we'll do it Friday. We'll do a Black Friday. Black Friday podcast. Black Friday there podcast. You never know. <laughs> maybe we'll sell some stuff too, just to fund the podcast. Right, there we you can. Go. Check, Stay safe, check everyone. Check back for guests uh, for uh, for for gifts for everyone. Right, exactly. <laughs> Another one in the books. We're have out. a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.